In this lecture, we're going to cover the communication system model and how that relates to graphic communication. So to start, a simple definition of a system is a number of parts that work together to accomplish a goal. And we have two different types of systems that are out there. We have natural systems and device systems. Really, if you think about it, as you look at anything that you might see in the world today, you can uh, Put it together into some type of system. You can analyze it as a system. And the two different types of systems here, we have a natural system, uh, which is just a natural part of our world, our universe. Uh, so for example, the respiratory system in your body. Uh, that is a number of parts that work together in your body to accomplish a, col a goal, and that goal is to allow you to breathe. And so it's a natural system. Uh, out in the, the universe, we could talk about the solar system. And though it may not necessarily have a specific goal that it accomplishes, it is certainly a number of parts that work together. So we have all kinds of systems that are around us that are just part of our natural world uh, that, that work together to accomplish a goal. And then we also have device systems, and these types of systems are man-made systems. Uh, so for example, here in the picture, you see an irrigation system. So obviously with this pivot, there are a number of systems, or there, excuse me, there are a number of parts that work together to accomplish a goal, and that particular goal is to water the field. Uh, other types of other examples of systems, of device systems that are out there, you think about uh, the internet. Uh, it is a number of systems uh, that work together to accomplish a goal, and that being to transfer information. A computer in itself has a number of parts to work together uh, to accomplish a goal. Uh, if you think about a house structure, uh, there are very individual systems within the house, such as the electrical system, where we have a number of parts that uh, accomplish a goal, the goal being to provide electricity throughout the house. We have a heating and air conditioning system, uh, the purpose to uh, provide conditioned air throughout the home. Oh, so you could look at the specific systems within the home itself, or you could consider the house altogether as uh, a system, and that uh, the goal there being to provide a dwelling place for somebody. So, uh, you know, we can really narrow down systems into very specific things, uh, or we can look at them as more broadly. But nonetheless, uh, systems are incredibly important. And I just want to be sure to emphasize uh, that being able to look at systems and evaluate systems uh, is really an important skill today and going in the future. Uh, as so many of our industries are based on different types of systems, that it is so important for somebody to be able to see things um, as a number of parts that work together. Um, and that if you can look at things as, as a system and you can look at a system and say, okay, here's an inefficiency in this system and here's something that we can do to improve that, uh, that you can really go a long ways uh, being successful for that company and, and uh, really adding to uh, you know, the gain the goal of that company uh, by helping to make those systems important. So I really want to encourage you to uh, train your mind to be able to look at systems and evaluate systems and begin to see things, uh, how they're put together as systems, uh, because that's such an important skill in industry today. Well, for this class, and looking at graphic communication, uh, we have uh, different types of systems model, but I want to start with this basic systems model, and this applies to all kinds of different areas. Uh, so basically in the systems model, we have inputs, processes, outputs, and then a good system is going to have some kind of feedback loop that uh, tells us uh, if we're really accomplishing our goal or not. And this can be applied to really anything. It's a very general, broad-based model uh, that can you know, apply to any area. So let's say, for example, in a lumber mill. Okay, so uh, our input is going to be uh, the raw lumber, the, lo the, the logs or the trunks of the tree or whatever they might be. Uh, so that's going to be our input. In the lumber mill, those uh, logs are going to go through a series of processes, um, cuts and, and mills and all variety of things, uh, and our output is going to be our finished boards um, that are a specific size. Uh, then we're going to have some kind of feedback that tells us you know, if our boards that are going through our processes, if they're actually meeting the standards, meeting the expectations that we have. So that would be an example uh, in a production uh, model. And so you can really apply this basic model to a lot of different areas. 
And so uh, here we have different types of technology systems, as I just talked about. Uh, we have production technology, and uh, just with the example of the lumber mill, that would be an example of the production uh, industry, uh, the construction industry. Anything that's producing a particular good uh, could typically be uh, fall under that production technology. Uh, we have power and energy, and uh, transportation tends to, those tend to be combined together. Uh, but we have different technology systems for each of those areas. Uh, and then for this class, we're really focusing in on the communication technology and looking at the different systems that we use that we have in place uh, in order to communicate information. So we have a specific communication system model uh, that we can look at and we can use and apply. Again, it, it's still very general. It's more specific than uh, the basic systems model. It is, uh, you know, customized for communication, uh, but it's still a broad model uh, that can be used, really applied to any type of communication uh, that we might look at. So in the communication system model, we start with inputs. And in this case, input, uh, you know, we talk about what is the definition of communication. It's the sending and receiving of information. So in this case, the input is typically some type of information uh, that we want to send. It's some type of information uh, or a message that we want to send in a variety of ways. And so we have some standardized processes that we can evaluate uh, however this communication occurs. And so we have an encoding process where we prepare a message to be sent. We have a transmission where we place a message on a channel. We have a receiving where we take a message from the channel. A decoding where we make the message understandable. And then we have some kind of output, that being that the message has been sent uh, and received. Uh, there is the output and then we typically have some kind of feedback loop that uh, gives us some feedback on whether or not our communication actually occurred. Uh, so to kind of give some different examples of, of a way this might work. Uh, let's start with uh, a basic example of a telephone call. Let's say a landline telephone call uh, back when we used to use landlines all the time. Uh, so in this case the input was the message that I wanted to send across. I wanted to talk on the telephone. I wanted to tell somebody something over the telephone. So my message was the input. So we go through a process of encoding. Well if you think about it, uh, you know, when you talk to somebody on a telephone, and when you're talking over a landline, it's not that they actually hear your actual audio voice uh, coming out. Um, they can't just hear that over the airwaves. There has to be an encoding process. And so uh, what actually happens is your audio voice gets converted to an electrical signal. So that electrical signal can be passed through uh, the uh, telephone system. So in that first stage, we have an encoding, and uh, the device that takes care of this is the microphone. In your telephone, you have you speak into a microphone, and a microphone collects that audio voice that you speak and converts it to an electrical signal. That's what a microphone does. Uh, so then it's transmitted, and so that microphone takes then and places that electrical signal onto the telephone line. Uh, in this case, we're talking about a hard wire, uh, a physical landline. And so that's our channel is it goes across the, the, the phone line. Uh, if we were transmitting uh, on a cell phone, that would the channel would be the air wave, or more specifically, the electromagnetic wave that travels through the air. Uh, if we're talking about commu communicating voice, um, you know, face to face, that channel is the airway. So there are lots of different channels uh, that we can do. But in our analogy here, we're talking about uh, taking and placing that, that electrical signal onto the, the phone line. At the other end, then we have a receiving where there's going to be a device on their telephone that takes a message from the channel. Uh, and so the phone itself is going to take that electrical signal and it's going to receive that. The, so their telephone is receiving that, that message. And then there's a decoding process. And in this case, that's going to th be the speaker. Uh, they're sitting there with the phone up to their ear and they're listening. And that phone has a speaker. And the purpose of the speaker, a speaker takes and converts electrical signals into an audio sound. Uh, a transmission sound uh, that we can hear. And so that's the decoding process is taking the electrical signal and creating an actual sound from it. Uh, so then the output then becomes the message that uh, is communicated over the speaker. And then the feedback then becomes if that message is received. So as I'm having this phone conversation, if I say something and the person on the other end of the line says, what was that? I didn't hear you. 
clearly communication didn't happen. I sent something, but they didn't receive it. So my feedback uh, is that they said, hey, I didn't understand that, or what did you say? And so we, then the process goes over and over and again. So you can see how even something as basic as a telephone system conversation, uh, we can apply uh, the communication system model to that. Uh, and, and you could do that really with a lot of different things. Uh, let's talk about maybe, for example, if we're going to uh, communicate something over a billboard. Let's say we want to design a billboard for our company that's going to go up on the interstate and communicate. So obviously the input is the message that uh, we want to communicate. We want to get our information out. We want to get our message. So the process, we have an encoding where we prepare the message to be sent. And so this is maybe going to be kind of the design phase of you know how we're going to put this together, what's the information we want to go. Uh, then the transmission, we place a message on a channel. Uh, so this is actually going to be the taking that information and putting it onto that uh, the billboard itself or um, putting it onto whatever type of screen or whatever is going to be going on this billboard. Uh, so that is our channel. In this case, the channel is going to be this billboard. On the receiving end, then obviously the other side then is somebody looking at that billboard. Somebody's driving down the interstate and they look, they're taking the message from the channel, they're getting that information from the billboard, and then the decoding is making that message understandable. So uh, they're processing that information uh, in their mind. You know, if we've done a good job with our design, the, what the information, it makes sense and they can understand it. If we didn't really do a very good job of that, uh, then maybe in that decoding process, they just don't understand. They don't get it. They don't, they don't get the message that we're coming across. And so the output then becomes whether or not they receive that information and maybe a feedback for us is, you know, maybe we put our telephone number on there, we wanted them to call to hire us for a particular job. And so the feedback would be they give us a call and uh, say, hey, I saw your billboard. I'd like to hire you for a particular job. So that's our feedback. So really you can apply this communication system model to any of the variety of types of communication uh, that we have out there. Uh, if you want to, to look at how a computer communicates, we could break it down uh, into each one of these steps. And again, you could do it as a whole computer or you could get it all the way down into even, let's say for example, the processor on your computer. And so uh, you can be more broad or you can be very specific, but this model uh, fits in all those places. And the importance of it, again, as I mentioned early on, the importance of this is understanding the system model. Uh, because in a position, in a job position that deals with communication, uh, there's going to be problems. There's going to be times when that communication breaks down. And it's important to be able to see the whole uh, communication as a system and identify, okay, where is the problem? Uh, you know, is, if the problem is the, in the transmission area, you know, we don't need to be spending a lot of time in the decoding. Okay. Uh, if our problem's in the microphone, we don't need to be working on the speaker on the other end. And so by being able to see it as a system and to uh, specifically identify where that problem is within that whole system model, uh, it can make us more efficient in terms of solving that problem, uh, which, you know, time is money uh, in the business world. And so uh, we're going to be saving money and be able to accomplish goals much better. So uh, it's important to be able to know the system model, know how it works, and apply it, and use that as you evaluate different things. And so that's why uh, systems are incredibly important. So overall, we looked at the, the system model, the basic system model that we have out and, and available. And then more specifically, we looked at the graphic communication system model, uh, which breaks down the processes into different stages uh, in terms of encoding, transmission, receiving, and decoding.